Hey guys, so welcome and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about my June TBR. I'm really excited to talk about this one with you guys just because there are so many good books on this list. Most of them are new to me and I have heard good things about them on Instagram and on the internet so it's going to be great to get down my TBR and read a load of new books and there's a couple of rereads in here as well just because I'm trying to reread the series in order to read the new one because I am that person um, <laughs> but there's my own reasoning behind that which I'll talk about when I get to it so yeah without further ado let's just dive right in so the first one that I'm going to talk about is the third Game of Thrones book and that is A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. Now obviously it's a Game of Thrones book. It's essentially the books that the TV show is based off so I kind of feel like this doesn't need any description <laughs> because if you have no idea what Game of Thrones is then you know it, the TV show has been out a while, the books have been out even longer. If you have no idea or no interest then I feel like there's no point in me even explaining this to you um, but you know it's an epic fantasy and I have watched the TV show and I I loved it we don't talk about season eight obviously but I wanted to give the books a go and see how they compared so yeah I was meant to finish this one in May but me and my friends decided we were going to sort of push it on for another month because we were kind of struggling to get into it and I know that A Clash of Kings was quite hard for us to get through so we're kind of hoping that things improve as we read this book and we'll just see where it goes. Um, so yeah I'm really excited to see how the characters develop in the books and what differs you know. The next one that I'm going to talk about with you guys is the From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armantrout. This is the sort of first book in her series. Obviously, she's publishing more with The Crown of Gilded Bones being the latest release. I read From Blood and Ash and A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire late last year, early this year. And I just wanted to reread them because A, I am obsessed with them, I love them so much. And B, because the new one came out in April, so I kind of wanted to like reread the whole set and just sort of dive right in. Um, but yeah, so I am <laughs> super excited to do this because I've been putting this off for the longest time and I don't know why. I mean, I keep trying to put it on the TBR for me to read and I never end up getting around to it. but. Um, one of my friends is also going to start reading this so I'm really excited to go through that journey together and I, I know that we're both going to be sort of texting each other like oh my god have you got to this bit yet like because I've read the first two I know exactly how she's going to feel when she gets there um, that's quite heavy so we're going to put those down but yeah essentially From Blood and Ash is a adult fantasy romance centered around our main character Poppy. She is the maiden in this society and essentially she can't be seen, heard, um, can't touch anybody, can't be with anybody. You know she's sort of this pure figure in the society and she's essentially chosen by the gods basically and she's getting up to, sort of working up to her ascension and you know sort of where she integrates herself into society because she's god's chosen and all that and she comes across a guy called hawk who becomes her guard but there's a bit of a romance there and it's very steamy spicy very sexy <laughs> um so yes i absolutely love this but also there's this underlying plot with a fallen kingdom. So Poppy and Hawk get sort of dragged into that and they're, they're involved in this more than they realise. So yeah, I, I love the fact that this is like very romance, but with a heavy fantasy subplot. You know, there is a lot of fantasy in this and I obviously can't talk about it too much because it would spoil it, but highly recommend these books and I can't wait for A Crown of Gilded Bones just because it's I mean it's gonna leave me wanting more I know that because of the endings of the past two but also I just I need to know I need to know more you know so can't wait to check these out 
The next book that I'm going to talk about with you guys is The City of Brass. I th is it the da Devil Bard trilogy? I think that's what it's called. Um, but essentially it's The City of Brass, The Kingdom of Copper and The Empire of Gold, which I haven't got yet because I'm I'm, I'm waiting for that to arrive. Um, but this is by S.A. Chakraborty. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I don't know too much about this and I think I don't really want to know too much just because it might give some stuff away but I know that you have your main character Nari I think how you pronounce it and she's like this con artist um in Cairo and she must stumble across something which releases a jinn and it's, it's very Aladdin-y you know it, it kind of gives me that vibes you know when I look at the covers I definitely think that it, it reminds me of Aladdin so I think, especially with the whole Jin thing as well, you know, genies. Um, so yeah, I don't really know much about it other than that, but I know that this is a good series because a lot of people have talked about it. And I know that Olivia reads a latte. She read City of Brass recently. I think she's working her way through Kingdom of Copper um, and she absolutely loved it. So I am very keen to get to this and, and see what it's about for myself. So yeah i just need empire of gold <laughs> so the next one that i'm going to talk about with you guys is seasons of the storm by el cosimano i think that's how it's pronounced no idea um i got this as a gift from my friend jack uh for christmas and i am really excited to get to this one because it kind of gives me a cawthorn and roses vibes but it can uh, snow like ashes vibes um I am just going to read the synopsis to you because it just sounds so much better reading the synopsis because you really get the full extent of what this story is about and that and the synopsis is what gripped me. I, I added it to my wish list because of the cover and I think I saw it on somebody else's wish list and I was like oh yeah I want that not knowing anything about it and then my friend Jack bought me it and I read the synopsis and I was like oh this is a bit of me like this is my kind of book so it says choice number one live or die one cold crisp night jack summers was faced with that choice live forever according to the ancient magical rules of gaia or die jack chose to live and in exchange he became a winter like in the other seasons each year jack must hunt and kill the one before him gaia's rules are pretty straightforward winter kills autumn autumn kills summer summer kills spring and spring kills winter which means that Jack kills Amber, Amber kills Julio, Julio kills Fleur, and Fleur kills Jack. They die, they train, they hunt. But when Jack and Fleur, winter and spring, fall for each other against all the odds, the true br brutality of their eternal lives becomes all too personal and all too painful. And Fleur is on the brink of being purged forever, unless they can come up with a plan to stop the cycle. When the four seasons unite, risking immortality for a chance at love and to reclaim their free will, their cross-country escape brings them to a place where they must defend each other against a creator who seeks to destroy them all. I just think that it's so... It's kind of like The Hunger Games meets A Court of Thorn and Roses because, I mean, I'm only saying that because of the whole seasons thing. That's <laughs> the only link to this that I can tell you it's because it's seasons and like snow like ashes is based on the seasons as well so that's my only link um but this sounds so good like I just love the idea of this you know possibly enemies to lovers um you know this whole thing that you're meant to kill each other but you fall in love instead and then you rebel against the system like it's just I'm really excited to see how this goes and yeah I I'm really excited. <laughs> the next one that I hope to read in June is Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Basherdaus. I think that's how you pronounce it. I am seriously picking all the hard to pronounce surnames today, aren't I? Um, but yeah, I am really excited to get to this one. This is the Fairy Loot edition because it's in pink, not in white. And we have the sprayed edges and we just love the let me see if I can do this so uh, the reverse of the dust jacket is gorgeous um but you came here to hear about the book you didn't come here to see the book uh <laughs> so essentially what I understand from this is you have a girl who 
is poisonous to the touch and her twin brother is getting married and she meets a guy who doesn't fear her and she also comes across a demon who kind of teaches her whether she's like the princess or the monster that's kind of my my understanding of it is because i mean the tagline of the book says sometimes the princess is the monster so i don't really know what it's about specifically like i don't know what the conflict is i don't know kind of obviously where the story will come to a head i i i don't know much i just know that there's a princess and she's poisonous to the touch and you have this demon who is obviously going to be a really interesting character and then there's obviously going to be a romance there with this this guy whether he's a prince or not i have no idea um but the guy who doesn't fear her and he doesn't fear her touch and it's going to be interesting because you you think that she is this princess and she's poisonous to the touch and oh the, the you know the poor soul you know that kind of thing but it's going to be a case of well is she actually the monster like is she the villain here is this her perspective you know that kind of thing so i'm really intrigued to see how this goes and to see what the book is actually about um like i said the synopsis for all of these for goodreads will all be down below so if <laughs> if i've butchered these in any way feel free to go check them out yourself because you know it's it's me it's bound to happen but i am really looking forward to this because i think this one might take me by surprise i haven't heard much about this but i think somebody on instagram has read it and they absolutely adored it so i am intrigued to see how much i like it what it's about that kind of thing and i'll be sure to let you know in my wrap up what i thought of it so and the final one that I'm going to talk about with you guys is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I recently saw the Illumicrate edition. They've unveiled like the 10th anniversary edition. This is just the What Are Stones exclusive that they did. And I have heard so much about this. A lot of people read this like 10 years ago when it came out. And it is like a staple for instagram and, and probably booktube as well so it's about time that i read this one and find out what it's about and i kind of feel like it's going to give me greatest showman vibes which i absolutely love like the idea of that and i think essentially the night circus it's a circus that only appears at night so and i don't know if it's like a once a year thing um yeah well open only at night so it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. I mean, again, this is one that I don't really know too much about. Obviously, it's, well, it says it's set in 1866 and it's it's a circus that's only open at night. <laughs> I mean, you can imagine what's going to happen. It's just going to be great. And I'm looking forward to reading it. And hopefully this will give me the inspiration to read the Caraval series as well, because I know that one is on my TBR and a lot of people love that series as well so hopefully if I like this and I'll like that and yeah I'm hoping to read the Starless Sea at some point as well I know that's by the same author so because it says it there <laughs> um yeah I mean that was a pretty useless description <laughs> it's a circus that opens at night <laughs> um but like I say I mean I didn't really want to know too much about this book going in because I feel like that's part of the intrigue I mean you don't really want to know too much about a circus that only opens at night, right? I mean, you you want to visualise it for yourself. You want to see it for yourself, experience that magic, you know. And, I mean, can we just talk about how beautiful this cover is? And I know the Illumicrate edition was gorgeous, but, like, I really like this one. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, I mean, I'll just read the back because the back has a little something something so it says the circus arrives without warning no announcements precede it it is simply there when yesterday it was not the black sign painted in white letters that hangs upon the gates reads open at nightfall closes at dawn so even the back is not is not descriptive you know so obviously we follow a main character who's gonna find something about the circus she's gonna go she's gonna get embroiled in all of that i guess you know yada 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 <laughs> um so yeah i i'm really excited and i'm really intrigued to see what the hype is about on this one as well because i think that's what it is when you see books like this around you you do feel like you you want to find what the hype is about and and see how you feel about it like are you going to be feeling are you going to agree with the, the opinions are you not are you not going to like it you know so 
I'll keep you posted. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is my June TBR. I almost said April for some reason, but it's definitely going to be June. <laughs> Madness how quickly this has come round. Like it's absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. You know, the usual. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.